hello my lovelies oh it's been such a long time since i since i made a youtube video i don't even want to look i don't even want to look what the date was of the last one i just find it really difficult to get on youtube both to make and to watch anything um i'm either you know i, I prefer to focus on most of my energy on actually arting and being in my own head in my own space in my own experiments um and then of course um i've got my website um you can there is free stuff on my website so if it's not on youtube it is over there at least i do have a whole free section you can go there um i don't have tons and tons there but you know there is some stuff there um and of course i'm running my course at the moment let me just show you um uh, mini marks that's going on at the moment and i'm i mentioned that because this is connected to it um and i've done sophie uh sophie's design sophie's um class sorry <laughs> we've got four teachers four amazing teachers four amazing classes um all about mount making and also making some beautiful journals and this is my version of sophie's um it's my own sort of mount making inside because i'm you know i do a lot of it myself so it's my own style inside but the journal is um design is 100 percent sophie's and um i just went for this burnt yellow as i like to call it and this turquoise and you know they're not usually my colors but i just couldn't stop looking at this dyed fabric where she takes us through the whole thing it's amazing um i'm also working this uh fortnight because we every two weeks we have a new teacher um although it's lifetime access and you can work at your own pace we have this sort of active component at the moment and uh, this fortnight we have Lisa and she's doing, she's taking us through natural journal, natural trifold journal. So she has this lovely design, um, journal design. Um, and then she's um, taken up my challenge of mark making and decided to try to see if she can make a whole journal uh, with only natural, well, not 100%, but, you know, in, in the main, um, mark making and the dyeing and all that with all natural products. So really easy um sort of kitchen house um products so that's really fun to do and i'm absolutely loving it already now what i did and i realized um later that this might be something that you would all want to see um i thought first to do it as a gift lesson for my um uh, for the members of mini marks for the students there but i thought you know what i just want to give something back to the community and let's just put it on youtube <laughs> let's just put it on youtube okay so one of the things we do and i'm not showing anything that lisa's doing obviously um anything that she does it's over there in the course this is connected but it's it's different so one of the things we do and um it's okay to say because there's a lot of it about we a lot of us know about um dying with tea um and because i like color i was really determined to make a botanical journal that a natural journal that i really was going to use i've made so many in the past and as much as i love looking at vintage um from other people it's just stunning it's gorgeous love looking at it i've tried the vintage style and it's just not me to actually make so it's one of those things i could look at but then when i i mean i can make it but then i won't use it you know so i can totally do vintage i've done plenty of vintage but or, or you know that vintage grunge but i just i won't use it so i have um one or two botanical journals and they just sit there and the others i've just sold because i just won't use them so this time i was determined and i knew what i had to do and that was color so long rumble to get to the point of <laughs> that i chose uh fruit teas for the color and i know fruit and berries really give amazing color so this one is raspberry this is all i could find it's just what i could find in the shop at the time i would much rather um not buy this brand and just go for something organic but um you know i wanted to get on with the class so i got these and so it's a mixture now the moment that i got everything ready and was going to dip this in i thought oh pigment <laughs> And if you've been following me or, you know, in mini marks and the gift lesson that I recently did, um, I love pigment. Um, I used to be uh, a large canvas acrylic abstract artist. I still call myself an abstract artist, but I don't do those large canvases and I no longer work with acrylic. It's all water media now. Um, but one of the things I discovered after doing that for some time was pastels. And once I got my hand on the pigment, 
love it i love touching color i love touching um supplies as close to as possible to them as i can get i don't know why i don't know i just feel i love being close to it and and maneuvering it with my hand as close as possible so i love working with pigments and it's just a natural thing for me to go Ooh, this is like pigment bits <laughs> couldn't help myself okay so this is what i did first and then i did go back and i did dye some fabrics and things so i've got a little tray you can see this color in here i'm fine with that i never wash it it's a bit like my jelly plate because almost everything i dye is um or, or um, stain or do sort of tray work is ends up being pinkish so that's why it's that color um and then i've got a few bits and pieces here um i've already done this and um i'm just showing you now again what what i did so this is just like craft um from a craft shop um lightweight cotton uh, patterned i haven't washed it or anything it's ready to go i've got here handmade i think this is cardi paper i've had it for so long i think that's what it is um i've got book pages this is a good 120 gram probably i've got drawing paper cartridge paper just cheap um, but it's about 120 grams uh, i've got little pieces of watercolor there's just some stuff that i've got on my table um and some more of that cardi paper now i did also experiment with muslin and a little bit of calico which i can't find right now just calico cotton um and i did film it but it's just long-winded and um not bothering with that <laughs> that bit so so muslin is just too absorbent now having said that um i don't know if you can see it on the video but i've got these like splotches which I just think are gorgeous. So they're their own separate thing. It wasn't what I was going for, but it's its own separate thing. And what I realized was it's just too absorbent. So something like muslin or cheesecloth, it's just, it won't do what I'm going to show you that I'm going to do. But it does do its own thing. So that's really yummy. The calico just didn't really work at all. Um, wish I could show you. Okay, I can't find it, but it's nothing much to look at anyway. But the calico cotton, um, it, it, it wasn't scoured it wasn't mordanted it wasn't anything like that so it just didn't take the color but calico cotton or any other cotton like that w would work so so that's fine but just letting you know that okay so it's quite simple and then i have a spray bottle and i'm going to put warm warm to hot water in here please don't put boiling water in plastic that's you know i know you're not going to drink it but it does all sorts of uh, things to plastic so um and it might even melt your, your bottle depending on how strong it is so i am going to get you know sort of off the boil quite off the boil it's only just hot and it's just hot water in in this i mean you could just pour it on but what i have found is that the less water there is the better it works okay so i'm showing you with this fabric because this is the one that i did first and i just love the result so i am wetting the fabric it is going to be wet but i don't want it soaking it really is i'm just getting that just getting that started I'm, it's not soaked through at all then i'm getting my tea leaves sort of it's berries and things it does have other stuff in this so um you will see all sorts of bits that are not going to do anything at all not going to have any color but that's fine uh, and then i'm sprinkling them on top if this was just berries if this was just raspberries and black currant or blueberries or something like that i, I wouldn't uh, sprinkle i wouldn't cover as much as i'm doing now but I also know that um, there's lots of these bits just aren't going to do anything. But I can see where there's chunks of, I think that's the raspberry. Okay, now before my water goes cold, so now I'm going to spray again. And you have to do it with warm water. The um, cold water is not going to do it it's like tea you know the the color of the tea comes out when you have the hot water on it so it's just the same thing we're doing i 
I am getting lots of stain from there. <laughs> I'll probably have too much there at the bottom, but that's fine. That's fine. So, okay, so I'm covered in quite a lot of water. You know, where I sort of start seeing the colour come out of the tea. But I don't want it absolutely soaking. So at some point I do have to stop and just stop. Okay, so now I'm going to do my second piece and I'm going to get this wet. But I don't want the water swimming on the top because then it's going to add too much water to there. So I just want, it's more like I want the paper wet. Gosh, the water feels cold already. <laughs> it's really quite warm in there. So you, of course you could wet your paper beforehand. Okay, so that's not going to add water, water on it, you know. Okay, so I'm just going to press it in. And I'll tell you now that I have tried this with layers and it, it, it does work, but I find that the layers start to get maybe too much water going on. Too much water starts seeping through. What happens when you have too much water is that it just does what like the muslin does. It just spreads, which is great and fine. It does its own thing. That's not what we're after here. So just get that nice and pressed in. You could put something on the top if you like to keep it down, but I don't find that's really necessary. And that's it. And I'm just going to let that dry. And we'll come back to it right so this bit this has been over a heat source i've got a wood burner if you have a radiator something like that um it's still damp but it's getting dry enough that i can have a peek at least and also if i can open it it can it will dry easier so let's have a look together so i've got this color here you have to ignore that a little bit <laughs> that was in my tray and that looks oh the black color the blueberry Okay, so a lot of it is, I have to scrape off. This wasn't the best demonstration for you because it's taken a lot of the bottom colour, but I can still see where it has worked. Look look at that. I've just soaked up all that colour at the bottom, which is really gorgeous. I love it. Um, but I've got here plenty to show you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm separating these now. I'm going to put it back over the heat source so it just dries a bit easier than sitting here in, in the tray. And I'll come back and show you the results. So while we're waiting for that to dry, uh, dry completely, I'm going to pop in this watercolour paper and cardi paper. I'll get and stick this underneath just to catch any extras. So I'm not layering, it's just that there was a space there. Okay, so... So this is paper, so this takes a little bit more to sort of soak the water in than the fabric does. But I really do want it to soak in. Um, just take a little brush in to sort of help it in. I don't want the water just sit in there so then it spreads. You know like watercolour or something? I don't want it to do that. I really want it to get into the paper. I'm trying to stain that paper so... Okay, let's get some of this thrown on. And again, I'm only throwing this much because I know half of it doesn't have any effect. Oops, that might be even too much, but that's okay. Another spray of warm water, warm to hot water. Oh, I can see it, the colour coming out. And the other great cool, cool thing is that I mean, if you drink fruit teas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. My room smells so good. Just lovely, lovely raspberries, what I can smell most. It's just getting this paper damp, but not, not too wet. I've got a little bit too much water there. I'm going to just see if I can get that off somehow. It's not too bad. Okay, and then I'm going to stick this on top. So yeah, I just worked out that I can get two, sort of two for one. You know, the stuff that I lay at the bottom and then lay one at the top, I can get them both marked. Because that's what I'm doing, I'm mark making. You know, it's a little bit out of my hands, but not too much. I'm sprinkling it on there. 
and I'm going to create marks because that's that's what our course is all about, mark making. I'm just going to put a tiny bit on top, just so it doesn't dry out. Just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. I feel like it's just getting too dry in some spots. Um, that's what our course is all about, making marks, making your mark. F fun ways and discovering new ways of making marks, but also finding out what works for you and what's personal to you. So... Yeah, so doing it this way with tea and of course absolutely try it with ordinary tea leaves and see what you get. I'm sure you get something um, and I think if you keep it to very, very low amount of water, it shouldn't just spread. And of course coffee greens. OK, so that one's ready to um, go and sit in, uh, above a heat source as well and dry. I'm going to check if the other two are um, I try so we can have a look at them together. Oh, look at this. I mean, I'm just going to brush all the extra grains off. I mean, no matter how many times I do this, whether it's tea or watercolour pigments, or <laughs> I never, ever stop being thrilled by it. Um, I suppose if I stop being thrilled by colour happening, then um, I probably wouldn't want to be an artist anymore. I suppose that's what makes me an artist, is that... It's just it's pure happiness to me. So I'm using a brush, but by all means, if it's dry, if you if you dry, by all means use your hands. If your hands are clean and you're not going to make any mess, um, depending on what you're using, you might get some streaks. I don't know. It really depends what you use. I find this one is fine, but if you just want to be a little extra careful, then um, your art toothbrush is great and look at that if you've been dying um, with natural products for any length of time what you know is that um, either you've learned or you've discovered yourself is that pH pH of paper or water um, has an effect on the color especially especially in um, natural dyes so what I discovered when I was doing this is that on some papers, I oh, look at this, it's so good. Now some of the bits, sorry, I'll come back to what I was saying. I'm just letting you know that some of the bits um, I can't get off. Like they really, really stick if you let the paper dry completely. And I'm all right with that. It just depends how much you want to scrape and get, get them off. Um, but I'm okay with little bits, little organic bits. But just keep in mind, it is organic stuff. So... Who knows what that's going to do okay so what i find with my drawing paper my cartridge paper is that i get the black current to come out look at those blues look how gorgeous that is keeping in mind that was the stain in my um tray um so that pink wouldn't be there but it does make it gorgeous doesn't it so this if it wasn't for that you can see it's just these yellowy orange bits and the blues it's just so cool I love that. So because I'm using the same water, my guess is that it's something to do with the pH of the paper. So if your substrate, um, for whatever reason, has a different pH to your other substrates, I suppose, then um, you're going to get this variety. And I absolutely adore that. I adore um, surprises like that, arty surprises. Okay, so I'm sorry, this wasn't the best. <laughs> I've got so much of the other colour, you might just be able to see the red. So in my cloth, in my cotton cloth, it's the raspberry that comes out. But I'll, I'll show you a piece that I've done before. So here's one, and you can see how white it is because I don't have all that pink in my tray. But can you see? Look at how beautiful that is. So obviously you could get a little bit of colour. Um, you could stain your cloth a little bit first because obviously you don't want to lose that these dark ones are just loses it but look at that that's still there um, you can stain it first and dry it and then have another go and put the the bits on top um, this one I just really was just part of my first um, attempt so I just wanted to keep the lightness of the cloth the original cloth is is whiter so it does have some staining that has gone throughout the cloth anyway but look at that look at those marks how absolutely gorgeous are they so that's the raspberry that's where raspberry comes out whereas on my paper oh my goodness that is so so good oh 
I just adore this. Some sort of surreal night sky or something with stars, blue stars or something. So the blue comes out here, the red comes out there. I just love it so, so much. And this is a gorgeous bit, bit of dyed cloth now. So my demonstration wasn't the best, <laughs> it wasn't the best, but you can see I do have a result. Okay. Oh, this paper. I'm just going to get the other one that we did together just to see what the Cardi paper did and what the watercolor did. We can look at that together and I'll be right back. Right. So like before, this is still a little little damp it isn't completely dry um, this is my cartridge paper so we know this is going to be gorgeous and blue and if you look at the difference I still have to scrape everything off but you can see the difference here <laughs> this is the pink that came, that was on the bottom of my tray and you can see how the pH of this paper brings out all the blues it's so cool it's so cool and this is only the top paper I find the top paper is not always the best but sometimes it is oh look at that so the cardi paper brings out the red look at that and so does my watercolor um brings out a little bit more of the blue it's a little bit more even the watercolor paper this is just like um composition book paper that sort of thing um oh, it does bring out both so yummy okay i'm going to let that dry completely so then i can scrape everything off and we can have a look at everything that we've we've made so i've scraped off of all the others and i'm just finishing off this cardi paper with you guys and oh, it's just so beautiful i'm going to have to do more of this cardi paper because it's absorbent um you know it's wonderful for uh, watercolors for example um it's almost like a, a lightweight watercolor paper so it's just really sucked in <laughs> that color especially that raspberry color and i think when it's mixed with the blue um it's no it's not mixed, so much mixed i think the blue has come out like a really warm blue so almost like a purple again must be because of the ph of this paper so I try and take most of the organic matter off. At least if it's loose, I want it off. If it's going to stick there, then I just don't bother. It's fine. I'm not, I don't fuss over it. That is just stunning. That's from the bottom of my pan, but that is so good. I do have some of these black ones here on my one top. That is so beautiful. Okay, let me show you everything I've done. Okay, so today I did this cardi paper look at those that raspberry the watercolor these were only small pieces so it's hard to say whether it brings out the blue more or whether just the the black current um landed on these pieces you know i would have to do a large piece to know for sure but because it's grabbed the red but it seems to like that and it's made it more like the cardi paper it's made it more um it's picking up the purple i'm just oh, this is beautiful look at that as a a new journal love it and this is just stunning and this is just cheap cartridge paper like drawing paper might be called different things 120 grams um but because it's picking up the blue rather than the pink it's just giving me another from the same tea it's just giving me a different color to work with in my journal that is just so stunning look at this cheap this cheap lined paper picks up the bits uh that's one that i've got too much of my my dye in there my color but you can see bits in there you can see the marks there gorgeous um on the muslin it um it we, we lose the mark making aspect but we get this beautiful blotchy stains and i'll show you the ones i've done before before today and i've got my book page book pages here look at that look at that how stunning is that this just absorbed it really well oh so good so some of it i've got more of the blue coming out this one look it's so raspberry it's so gorgeous this one melds it a bit more but still marks so beautiful i mean look at that this one went psh, i had lots of water but that is a gorgeous color look at that beautiful um some music sheets 
this one spread a bit so you may not be able to see it that well but I do have some of the blue so this one the pH seems to like my blue that's more of my just cartridge paper loving that blue look at that oh, that is so good I just had this huge blotch and I left and I thought well let's just see what happens the interesting thing that some of the stuff that doesn't um, some of the bits that don't do anything actually ended up working as a resist so when I scraped it off I got these light white colors but how cool is that so you could have really big blotchy bits or more of the mark making um, this is lined paper more of my music sheets it's more subtle but really yummy and another piece of muslin um, that I actually got a few pieces because it wasn't it was a lot drier this one so it's super easy super easy but so gorgeous so gorgeous um, I had so much fun doing this you can see I've made plenty it's just so beautiful beautiful I'm going to do this again and again it's so gorgeous so have a try super easy really fun come over and see me on my website um, I'll have this video probably um, up, 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 uploaded there in my free section there's, there's some videos there to come and see and um, if you want to join us on our mini marks course there is lots more of mark making lots more of this this is just um, an extra so thank you bye